do you feel uh, good that others are maybe sticking up for Penn State and going with that fight for Penn State with the NCAA? I'm excited to play Central Florida. George O'Leary is a heck of a football coach, and they got a great program. And I'm focused on our guys passing the conditioning test, lifting weights, finishing strong academically, and they've done extremely well with that. Starting camp, our guys, I think we're fourth and third, and, um, and and really looking forward to that. Had a great meeting with uh, with our new athletic director and spending some time with our, our president. So uh, I'm focused on those things. And the other stuff, again, I, I, I try not to spend a whole lot of time talking about. Really, the only time I talk about it is with you guys, to be honest with you. With the uh, unlimited snacks and meals coming, is there uh, any concern about the players coming back in the offseason? You know, I, I actually, one of my biggest concerns is the way the, the, way the media is, is, is discussing it. The way I understand it, I don't think it's unlimited meals. And the way it's being presented in the media, I think, could create a little bit of an issue with, with disappointment that it's not just, you know, Shoney's smorgasbord open all day long. You know, that, that's, that's really not how it's going to be. So one of my concerns is that making sure that the public, and you guys have the ability to affect the public, that they truly understand the rule and what it means. Um, and then the other thing is, how are all these different schools and how are all these different conferences going to implement the rule? But no, I, I don't worry about that. In, in most places, you know, it's a challenge because the way the rules are set up, what the football player gets fed and is able to, to get is the same as any other sport. And we usually have a different caloric intake. You know, so I, I do think, uh, you know, there's some, there's some opportunities and there's some excitement with it. But uh, that, that's my biggest concern is making sure that we implement it the right way and that the public truly understands the rule. James, when you were hired, was there any trepidation on your part about having to work with the new president and then eventually an AD? I assume you knew that. Uh, was that a concern to you? And now that the, the, the situation has played out, where do you think things stand from that perspective? Yeah, I, I, it, was a, it was a major concern. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. When you take a job and you don't know who your bosses are going to be, and my boss is, is the is the athletic director, my boss is the president, my, all, my boss is the board of trust. I got a bunch of bosses. That's the other thing I always find unique is people say, well, you're the head coach, you're the boss now. You're not the boss, you're just working for different people. Um, but yeah, I think I think that was a big part, but you know, the people that I was able to come in contact with at Penn State uh, sold me on Penn State, and the type of people that are gonna be attracted to come and work at Penn State. So um, you know, I was comfortable with that. I've been really, really excited getting to know President Barron. I've been really excited to get a chance to get to know our AD. It's a lot quicker, obviously. It's happening a lot faster. Um, but uh, no, no time like the president to get to work on it. Sense of relief that that part of it is over and you know the people that you're going to be working with? It is. And, and now you know, now we're going to have to develop the relationships because for us to have the type of success that we want to have, you know, the, the president, the AD, the head football coach, all the rest of the coaches the administration, we all got to be on the same page. And, and um, you know, building that trust and that rapport and those relationships, it's going to be great. Uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Being that you're one of the new guys in the conference, is this more valuable? Maybe it's your first time here. You know, kind of see the make of the conference, maybe you meet some people you haven't met before, maybe against. Does that makes any sense compared to you know, past SEC media days where they're not very good? I think a little bit. You know, the coaches, we've had, we've had um, Big Ten head coaches meetings already. A lot of us have known each other for years anyway, so... There's, a, there's relationships that are there, and you kind of know their styles and recruiting, you know their styles and how they coach as well. Obviously, every day you're learning more. Um, you know, this has been great. I'm kind of enjoying this. There's things that I probably, like always, every day I'm taking notes of things that I would do differently. We brought our players in this morning. Next year, I'm going to bring my players in the day before. I saw a lot of the other players here. And you know, being able to show them Chicago a little bit, go out and have a dinner, um, some deep dish pizza, go out and kind of enjoy the city and get a chance to spend a little bit more time together. Um, these are unique experiences. I want to make sure our guys get a chance to really, you know, enjoy it. So that, that's something I probably do a little bit different. But yeah, every day just learning more and more about Penn State, specifically the Big Ten as a whole. James, how has this atmosphere compared to SEC media days you've been through in the past? It, it's been great. Um, you know, I'm going to stay out of the comparison business. Um, but, it, but it's been great. You know, I'll have a better idea at the end of these meetings, and I'll have a better idea at the end of the year. Um, but I get that question a lot about you know making comparisons. And, 
again, I'm, I'm going to focus on I'm going to focus on Penn State. I'm going to focus on the Big Ten. Now, you were What's talking going to be like for you preparing for your first preseason training camp. What, what would you have to do? What do you want to get done this week? Well, pretty much most of the preparation has already been done. We've been working on it since the day we got the job. Um, you know, what helps is you know you have a model of that you've used for the last however many years. And you adapt that model and you make some tweaks and you're constantly trying to kind of grow and evolve, but you have a model, so that's helpful. Um, you know, obviously there's some rules with the NCAA too of when you can start, so a lot of things are figured out for you. Um, but, you know, we, we feel pretty good to go. There's not a whole lot left, left for us to do. Um, it's just kind of cleaning up a few things, having some discussions as a staff, getting the final pieces of the puzzle put together and roll. But, you know, really the preparations, you know, in balance. Fine. Uh, you were talking in there about having a lot of young guys and needing to create depth quickly. What are what do you find to be the best ways to get like new players acclimated quickly? Well, I think you know it's it's like people talk about well, how do you teach guys how to win by winning? You know, how do you how do you create depth by playing the guys? You know, and I think that's the hard part is you you, you kind of have a plan, and everybody says that you should play to create depth, but then we take the best players off the field and the fans are saying well how come those guys aren't on the field I mean you know it's critical well you, you got to find a time to do it and if you're not careful as a coach you, you become cautious and you play not to lose rather than playing to win and playing to win isn't necessarily about your starters playing 80 reps it's what's going to be the, in the best interest of the program for four quarters what's going to be the best interest of the program for the season and what's going to be in the best interest of the program for the long haul got to constantly be doing that so we'll have plans going into each season and each game of our starter is going to play this many reps the backup is going to play this many reps and at the end of the game it's going to need to be that way and I'm pretty aggressive in pushing our guys to make sure that happens. There's competition for a lot of spots but the running back spot in particular what are you going to be looking for especially from Zach and Belton as camp goes on what are some criteria you to use to pick a starter? Well, I, I, to be honest with you, I think at the running back position, um, I don't think who the starter is really matters. I mean, if you look at major college football, the NFL, you're going to play three running backs. And they're going to rotate in, and you're going to keep them fresh, and then you're going to go with the hot hand. So, um, you know, whether that's a freshman or whether that's one of the seniors that you mentioned, um, great. But we're going to play three guys and keep them fresh and keep them healthy. Um, so I, I don't. I'm not as focused on who's starting, especially at that position, if that makes sense. James, do you think the leadership on this team has emerged already, or that it will emerge during preseason? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think um, we got a pretty good foundation. We got guys that have really stepped up into those roles, but we're going to need to continue developing that through camp. You can never have enough leadership, and a lot of people, you know, when you, when you think about leadership, they're thinking about you know on the field. But it's more than that. It's it's in the classroom. It's on campus. It's in the community. It's having leaders in your freshman class, your sophomore class, juniors and seniors. Because if it's all senior led, what's going to happen on Saturday when the seniors are one place and the freshmen are somewhere else? You better have leadership throughout your program that's willing to speak up and 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 say what's right. And um, and, and that's very important. It's important in the locker room that it's not just over in this section. That there's leadership throughout, so we're constantly trying to develop leadership in our program. Who are some of the guys who have emerged already? Well, I think you know Hackenberg obviously um, has got everybody's attention. Diefenbach is a guy that I think everybody has respects, not only because of the way he plays, but how he's conducted himself for, for five years. Um, you know, on defense, Mike Hole. He doesn't say a whole lot, but when he does, people listen. It might have something to do with the fact that he benched 225 over 30 times the other day at, at Lift for Life, um, but th th that's important, um, and he's done a nice job. Um, you look at Fickett on special teams, I think he's a guy that you look at all that he's been through, the highs, the lows, uh, he's kind of, a, he's kind of a, you know, been there, done that, he's seen it all, and I think he's, he's a tremendous um, resource for all of our players, guys that have just started. I mean, He's handled it extremely well and had a really confident, strong spring. So they're the guys that have stepped up for so far.